Oh my goodness. Ah! Stop! Stop! That was not part of that. What's cracking everyone? Got a cool little project that we're about to unbox. I uh, love a good unboxing video. Oh. <laughs> Just not working. So good. And now the story behind this is there was a competition where Camera Pro in Brisbane put out a competition that said, can you capture a photo that embraces what it's like to live outside of isolation? And so I put up the following image and the image won. And with it, I got a voucher to use at the store. And so I've finally worked out what I'm gonna use that voucher on and it's in this box. So let's, um, let's open it up so we can all share in the joy of what it is. Oh, it's what I've always wanted, paper. It's not a very big box, but it's a lot of paper in it. Here it is, folks. <laughs> can you see that without the glare? Yeah, it's the Osmo Mobile 4 means fourth generation and the reason I got this the reason I bought this was because I'm doing more and more video stuff where you have to get out a massive gimbal and it just seems that maybe there's an easier way to do it my phone um, iPhone XS Max shoots 4k at 60 frames a second and it's good quality so I thought I might mix it up a bit should we unbox it because everyone loves an unboxing, right? DJI do a good job of packaging things up. They, they, you get excited when it comes to opening them. You're not sure how to open them, mind you. Some of you are scared about how I use the knife. It's all right, I'm a trained knife handler. Oh, look at this. Create magic moments, and it feels like they've just created a magic moment for me. And I don't want it to fall out of the box because we've had that happen before. Oh, wow, look at that. I have to watch this video back afterwards so I can see what it looks like because I haven't seen. Oh. Just quickly, how annoying was that bit of my beard? I know you saw it. I saw it too. I'm like, it's a bit of fluff that I didn't realize was there. Oh, well done for getting this far. Oh, <laughs> well, this lifts off completely. We'll look at that later. I don't even know what that is, but here it is. Here it is. That's what a mobile gimbal looks like. It's a very small version of a large gimbal. The idea is, let me show you that you somehow oh hello gotta get it around the right way that's magnet base that goes on your phone hello. Uh, magnet you turn it on and can you just unlock it or something well i've got to look at the instructions we'll do that in a jiffy but you've also got this so you can hold it like this you can hold it like that as this bit kind of oh shimmies around look at that and your phone goes on here and oh shall i no, that's not balanced at all, but if I turn it on... Oh, I can look at myself! What if I um, usually double dot? Oh! Well, this is going to be a lot of fun, and then you can just stand it up like this. And so I could put it there and just vlog to it. I'm sure it's got a face tracker on and I can make it do a ton of funky things. Oh, it's even got some instructions. See, instructions with pictures are oh, way better than just words. Oh, it's got this metal. Look at that. I don't know what I'd do with that. Maybe I'll stick that on my phone. What? It's like a ring pull. Hmm. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out how it works, take it outside and do some videography with it, see how the quality of it goes. Because what we're really looking for is stabilization. When you take video, you need to stabilize. If you're shaky, it looks rubbish. And if you're too quick, it looks rubbish. So you've, um, you've got to be well balanced with that. And this little machine should hopefully open up the way for me to do that. The biggest challenge about knowing whether to use this advice is what do you use it for? It has the potential to be really gimmicky and really cool, but what do you actually use it for? I'm gonna show you three kind of shoots now really, really quickly. A real estate, a B-roll, and a product shoot. And you can decide for yourself if the stabilization of this is better than just your handheld phone. And then we're gonna talk about some of the features that this offers through the app that comes with it and whether it will be helpful to you in your particular situation. <music>
OM4 and I'm just gonna break into a bit of a run and you can see if the camera stays stable I know I'm bobbing all around but look at the camera look at the horizon the houses the trees behind me so this is just me hand holding phone in front of my thing again don't look so much at my head but look at the trees and the houses behind and then I just break into a little bit of run for you and so you're looking to see how stable the image can be. First thing you want to do when you connect the phone to the Bluetooth that is built into the Osmo 4, it's how it all works. You want to download DJI's Mimo app, then you want to update the firmware, then you want to calibrate the gimbal. It can do all that within the app. It'll walk you through it as you um, upload the app. It's all quite straightforward and, and quite easy to do. You can just set it up in front of you using the little tripod stand that it comes with and you can speak into it. You can compose your shot. There's a little joystick here that you can track along, especially if you're filming something on the opposite side of you. And again, you can center by double clicking that lever and you can go right down up and so you can get some nice panning stuff. It's also got a record button that is just on the trigger there. It's very ergonomic, very helpful and comfortable to use. It doesn't weigh very much. Normal gimbals weigh a couple of kilos, up to four kilos. Uh, this must be like 600 grams. It's really, really light. You know, it fits in your hand nicely. You've got easy access. You can even zoom in and zoom out when you um, aren't shooting with the screen facing you. I'm shooting with the screen facing me so I can see what's going on and what the deal is. I can go to story mode. Woohoohoo! And if I recenter, that looks really nice. Uh, so you can go story mode, whether it's for Insta or to Facebook. If you click twice, it gives you a different orientation. You click three times and it turns it off. Puts it in standby mode. And so we'll go back by clicking once and comes back to where it was. So let me show you how this works. We're gonna to go to camera first, and here's our camera. Oh, if we go once, it goes to photo. Once, back to video, double click. And that's how we want things to be. If we look at the screen right in front of you, I'll pull it up so you can really enjoy it. In the top left, there's your uh, plugged in, whether it's plugged in and what the battery of the gimbal is like, what the battery of your phone is like, whether the flash is on, uh, if the gimbal is working, so all looks pretty good. I can record video by pressing this little button just here, and that records the video. Stop recording, then I tap on this. Uh, it's gesture control, so you can actually stand in front of it and move your arms around, and you can determine where it all goes. This little play button just here shows you what you've just recorded. Go back to that. And let's have a look at some of the cool, um, cool functions. So you can do photo, you can do a pano. Um, oh yeah, cool. Right, just, oh my goodness. Oh! Stop, stop. Oh, that was not part of the off, close down, shut down. What is going on? New firmware edition, I'll get that in a minute, hang on. Okay, apologies, oh gosh. So you can do a um, cloning sort of situation where you take a photo and you move and you take a photo and you move and you take a photo and you move. So that's a cool little function you can experiment with. You can obviously just take a photo, you can obviously just take a video. Then I can go to Dyna Zoom, and Dyna Zoom means you can move out, you can do this. Um, or you can move in and it makes the background change whilst the person is held in focus in frame. So that's a cool little um, option for you there. You have time-lapse. So time-lapse, and then we've got hyperlapse. And hyperlapse is obviously when you're moving around. So I could pick this up and I could walk down a street, do anything. Um, and it's hyperlapse is meant to do a time-lapse when you're moving. So uh, that's all pretty cool. You have complete control over these things if you want. You have, you can change your resolution. You can change, so um, that's uh, 1080p, and that's 720. You can change your speed. So at the moment it's hyperlapse, so I can do a really lot of photos within uh, a second, or not so many. Auto settings, and I can change what that looks like. So shutter is at 240. 
and I can go manual, have full control over that. And then it tells you down here what it is. My ISO is at 35, uh, shutter speed at 240. Uh, the exposure metering is on zero. So I hope you're getting a feel for it. I don't want to waffle on, it's all pretty straightforward, but you can got some funky uh, options that you can use with this sort of camera. It's a cool little device and I've been pondering when you might need to use it. I think it's ace for traveling because it's really, really small, it's, it's compact. Um, just watch this for a sec. It fits in this tiny little neat bag, has these drawstrings, you can chuck it in your bag, no stress. It's very ergonomic, like it sits in your hand really well. Uh, it's got this clip that goes on your phone, there's a little act, little indicator there of which direction you should put the camera so my camera's here and it needs to be up um, well this end of the clip so you know how to sit it in you sit it in so it's locked in and about halfway up your phone so that it balances nice and steady and you saw the stabilization before it's pretty mad right like wow it's smooth it's crisp it's clean compared to your phone in fact you don't realize how shaky your phone is until you put it on this if you're wanting quick b-roll if you're wanting to like have a really small light run and gun setup if you've got a phone that does great video then this is probably the way to go because it's so easy to set up it's so handy you charge just in here you've got all the functionality of this and it opens up opens up functionality on your phone that you otherwise wouldn't have but at the end of the day it's it's what do you need it for and I've done a few shoots for charities, for community organizations that have said, we just need something and it's not being paid. And so I've not wanted to bring down all my gear and go, how do I do this? So this little setup has just been ideal to do that kind of thing. It's also perfect for vlogging because sitting on a table, it holds it at exactly face height, providing you're not a giant and I'm not a giant. So check. So what do you think? It's kind of up to you. The price in Australian dollars is this at the moment. I realize in other parts of the world it's more cheaper. Yes, thanks for rubbing that in, that DJI products in Australia are not the cheapest, but I do love them. Gosh, they, they, just, they just do it really well. And you'll see that from my channel. There's more DJI shout outs than anything else. Oh, and Nikon, but Nikon's in a different sphere. If you like these videos, whether it's these product reviews on the different tech you can have, or it's how to go out and take some great images in a variety of circumstance. If you wanna learn more with me, if you wanna get more creative about photography, about video, join me, subscribe, be part of this community, say hi. I'd love to get to know you and actually meet you so you're not just a little number that bobs up. I know you're a person and I really wanna meet you and know you as a person, even though meeting you is probably out of the question this day and age with everything going on, but you get the gift. Gift, good one. You get the gist. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Hope this has helped you determine whether you should buy one of these or stick with what you have or go to something different.